Ed Hubert, just want to check your audio. Just waiting for Hubert to do his audio. Tends to work a lot better when you actually do the microphone button. Is it working now? Audio one, audio one two. Does that work better? I don't know. There we go. All right, cool. So, uh, sorry about that. I, I don't use WebEx much. I usually use GoToWebinar or Omnovia. Yeah. Every now and then, like when this PC shuts down, um, I just have to turn the microphone back on. So, if you can't hear me, just give me a visual. Yes, you should probably see a, a chart on your screen too. Do you also see that? All right. Okay, cool. All right, so we're going to go. So I'm going to try something a little bit different today. Um, I do this presentation called How to Risk $156 to Potentially Make a 1000 So you, can you see on the screen right now a big a guy with a big blue eye? Can you see that? All right, cool. And I draw on the screen quite a bit, so I'm going to do one more test here. If you can see, what is the answer to this question right here, just to make sure that you can see my my writing right underneath the, the fellow's big blue eye there. All right, cool. So got a lot of got a lot of answers there. Okay, all right. So what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to show you a trade. I'm actually going to show you two trades if I if I've got enough time. And I appreciate Fasto wrapping his up early. Uh, and what a stud Dr. J had to be to to run to a cafe and do a webinar with all that background noise. That was amazing. I don't even think I could talk with all that background noise. I would have been like squirrel chasing or a dog chasing a squirrel with all that noise. That's, that's amazing. I can't even believe he could pull that off. That's really good. So a round of applause to uh, uh, the guys pulling that off. That's amazing. So let's get it to it. I'm going to show you in this presentation how to risk $156 to potentially make $1,000. Now, I am registered, so you will hear me say disclaimer. And I will say potentially a lot because nothing's guaranteed. It's kind of like life. Nothing's guaranteed in life and nothing's guaranteed in trading. I can't guarantee you that you won't get hit by a Mac truck later on today, right? So I have to do a warning. I'll probably do one of the, the most harshest, scariest warnings you've ever heard in your life in the trading community. And what I do is I tell everybody, like, I can guarantee you you're probably going to lose all your money. And it's probably not what you want to hear, right? You're like, that's great. I'm just wasting my Saturday. Saturday. So I'm registered. Everything that I show you, you can take as hypothetical or simulated performance. I will also show, show you several live trades that I do myself. Uh, past performance is not indicative of future gains. Just because we can do that doesn't mean you can do it. Um, that's a disclaimer, right? I, I, does everybody understand this is for big girls and big boys, and you will probably lose a lot of money trying to learn how to do this business. If you think you're going to just come in here with a hundred thousand, fifty thousand, or two thousand, and turn it into a million dollars, it's probably not going to happen for you. You're probably going to have to invest anywhere from two to eight years before you get where we'll get a good. So, just everybody, give me a visual yet if you understand that this can be dangerous to your wealth if you don't know what you're doing. Okay? So I just, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. I'm not here to blow smoke up your ear and tell tell you it's all sunshine and roses and you're going to make a million dollars because you're probably not. So my name is Hubert Sanders. Uh, this is my no BS approach to trading and investing. Now, this PowerPoint presentation that I'm about to give to you usually takes me about an hour and a half to get through. So what I'm going to do is, as opposed to just crafting one that I can do in like 45 minutes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to go over some of the high points, okay? But what I'll do is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out some stories. And what I'm going to try to do is get straight to the meat of the presentation. If my voice is too loud, uh, voices in and out, you can log out, log back in, or mess with your speaker. So I'm going to, this is going to be a little bit different, but in a good way. All right. So before we start, um, how many of you in here, what do you trade? What do you trade? Do you trade more stocks, options, futures, forex? What do you trade the most of? If you're like me, I mean, I'll trade anything. I mean, if there was a market in Tic Tac for Coop Picks, and if I thought I could make money in it, I would participate in that market. So Got a lot of stocks and options guys in here. Okay. I'm mainly going to be teaching you right now a futures trade, okay? So if you trade stocks, if you trade stocks or if you trade options, you should also trade the futures markets for a couple of reasons. Like we had this thing called the the flash freeze where the NASDAQ went down, the stock exchange. We've also had the flash crash where the stock market locked up and the, 
CBOE locked up and stuff like that. And I'm not saying that the CME never locks up because it does too. So you should always have a small futures account to hedge the risk for when something like this happens. So if you don't trade futures, here's a quick hedging 101. So let's pretend that you're long Apple, okay? And the NASDAQ stock market, the stock market just locks up and it won't let you out or won't let you in or won't do anything. So it's, it helps if you can spell A A P L. That's easy. And let's say that the NASDAQ exchange went, goes down, okay? And now Apple continues to go up and you're long Apple. That's a good thing. You don't have to do anything if the NASDAQ futures are also going up. Now, let's say uh, you're long Apple and the NASDAQ stock exchange locks up on you. Then what you can do is you can short if the NASDAQ locks up. And let's say Apple, you were long, but the NASDAQ futures are going lower. Then all you have to do is shoot, short you some NASDAQ futures. And what will happen is, obviously, as the NASDAQ futures are going down, that's going to pull your Apple position down too, right? So you're going to be losing money on your Apple long, but you'll be making money on your NASDAQ short. Does that make sense? So if you don't trade futures, at least they'll get you a small futures account so that you can hedge against some of that gap up and gap down risk that you have with stocks and options, okay? And that'll help you out with your hedging aspect. And you should always use stocks regardless if you're using stocks or options or futures. But this is a good way to hedge off some of that risk when those, when those exchanges do go down and they will go down from time to time on you. Now, I gave you a, a decent disclaimer. I also want to tell you that even though I gave you that disclaimer, and I know the, the, the win-loss ratio, the success ratio in this business is very, very slim to none, right? Um, I grew up in eastern Kentucky coal mine, you know, in a poor rural com community. I worked hard enough. I was lucky enough. I didn't have a lot of talent. I was lucky enough to get around the right guy at the right time, at the right place, and put in a lot of hard work. And now I can pretty much do anything that I want to. I'm not saying it's a brag. What I'm trying to tell you is, like, if this redneck can, if this redneck from Kentucky can figure out how to do it and how to be successful, you should be able to get around other successful people, copy what they're doing, and have some degree of success also. A couple of reasons I do this, I actually help <clears throat> this lovely lady with some of her financial decisions and business decisions. And she's actually a little taller than that. She's actually got six inch heels on, so, or she's actually a little bit shorter than that. She's got six heel, six inch heels on right there. And also, I help uh, Richard Branson with his uh, charitable foundation stuff, raise some money for him. This is this big fella here is me. Let's see, one, two, three chins. I've, I've got it down to about two two chins here. This is my trade desk where I work at. These are twelve. Uh, these are six 24-inch LCD screens. This is a microphone I'm talking to you on. I never wear this garbage except for like photo shoots. Like right now, I've got like a, a t-shirt, a fleece, a pair of jeans on, and a pair of flip-flops. So um, that's that's kind of how I, I believe that the more successful people in whatever you're trying to do that you get around, some of that stuff will just rub off if you actually work hard on it. So congratulations. You're in the right place at the right time. We're going to do a quick math lesson. <clears throat> if you suck at math like I did in high school, in high school and college, I was uh, I was the C and the D guy, right? If I, got a, if I got a B, I would celebrate. I'd be like, woo, nice. I was usually Cs and Ds. So this is a real simple math question. Um, this trade that I'm going to teach you, the first trade only works 41.3% of the time, okay? Now, what you're going to do is you're going to risk $156.25 to potentially make $1,000, okay? Now, if I could show you a trade that you could do like that right there, would you be willing to take that trade? Would you be willing to risk $156.25 to see if you could make $1,000? Now, if I told you that it works 41.3% 41, uh, 41 of the time, how many days of the week would you be willing to do it if you only had to do it one time each day? How many days of the week? That's right, seven. You would do it in every day that ends in Y, but the markets obviously are not open on Saturday and or Sunday until until Sunday evening. So, so here's the math. Let's go through this. So let's say that you had six losing. We're going to say we're going 10 trades, 10 out of 10, right? Let's say you had six losing trades at 156, then you would lose $936. And you're sitting there going, I don't like this trade. This trade sucks. I don't like it. Please make it work. Now, let's say you only had four winning trades out of the 10. So four times 1,000, even in Kentucky, is $4,000. So you would come out on the positive side 
at 3054 for the week if you did that trade once a day and you, you did, did a, like you did a series of 10 trades, right? Does that make sense? Easy math. So let's say it's worse. Let's say that it's actually worse than 41%. Let's say it only works three times out of 10. Now you're starting to go, man, that's terrible. We're going to lose so much money. So you're going to lose seven trades at $156. Means you're going to means you're going to deposit $1,000.92, $1,092 into the market. Okay. Now when you have your three winning trades, you are going to withdraw $3,000. So you're going to come out ahead 1908. Makes sense. Easy math, right? No fractions. Yet. Although we're going to get in fractions here pretty quickly. So that's that's the deal. So that's the trade. There's five stages that every trader go through. Uh, there's one through five here. Uh, first, you learn how to lose lots of money. Second, you learn how to lose a little bit of money. Most people get stuck in three. So this trade is designed to take you from a stage three trader where you're treading water, making a little money, losing a little money, making a lot of money, losing a lot of money, to take you to stage four where you can start making some consistent cash flow, okay? And then stage five is where you start making a killing. Killing is asterisk because I don't know what a killing is for you. Maybe it's 200 a day. Maybe it's 2,000 a day. Uh, maybe it's two to uh, twenty thousand dollars a day. Maybe it's two hundred thousand dollars a day. I don't know what this killing is for you, but that's how it kind of goes. So this trade is designed to take you from stage three to four. Now, uh, a lot of traders, there's three different styles that you'll probably fit in. You either are, you either take a big loss in a trade and then you have a little winners and then a big loss and then a little winners and then big losses. Okay. That's how most people trade. How this trade is designed is what it's going to do is it's going to have an effect where you're going to do this. You're going to have little loss, little loss, little loss, little loss, little loss, little loss, big old gain. Little loss, little loss, little loss, little loss, little loss, big old gain. Series of little losses, big gain. Series of little losses, big gain. Now, some folks do this, which is painful. Big loss and a bunch of little losses. Big loss, big loss, little losses. So this trade is designed to take care of strategy B, okay? So if you are style A or style C, we're going to try to move you to style B, all right? Now, I want to tell you a quick story about the pot roast story, and I'm trying to go as fast as I can because I don't want to take anybody else's time. So um, this is a good analogy for um, what I'm going to teach you here. So my wife's name is Lisa. I've been married to Lisa for 22 years, and we have three kids here. And um, uh, Kelly comes over, and sometimes she comes over and helps Lisa uh, with dinner. So what we're going to talk about is Lisa's cooking dinner, and she's telling Kelly, like, all right, here's how we make a pot. We take uh, carrots and potatoes and salt and pepper and garlic, and, and then I cut the ends off of the pot roast, and I put it in this pot, and then I put the pot roast in the oven. And Kelly goes, okay, I don't understand. Why are we cutting the ends off the pot roast? And Lisa goes, I don't know. Uh, that's how my mom showed me how to make pot roast, and that's just how we do it. So what happens is Lisa then goes to her mom and asks her, and her mom goes, oh, we use carrots, potato, garlic, salt, pepper, a little bit of lemon juice, and cut the ends off the pot roast, put it in the pan, put the pan in the oven. And she goes, Mom, I don't understand. Why do we cut the ends off the pot roast? She goes, I don't know. Let's go ask my mom. So they go to the grandma's house, and grandma goes, okay, um, it's carrots, potatoes, salt, pepper, garlic, um, put a little lemon juice on there. And then uh, you cut the cut the pot roast off. You cut the edges off the pot roast right here. Cut the edge off. Then cut this edge off, and put it in the pan. And then put the pan in the oven. Like, That's the part we don't understand right here. Why are we doing that? She goes, "Oh, bless your heart." Well, honey, uh, me and your me and your father weren't so well off when we were growing up, and I only had one pan. The pot roast wouldn't fit in the pan, so I would just cut off the end of the pot roast. So you got to ask yourself, like, are you doing any of that stuff when you're doing trading? Uh, are you just kind of just following along and not really testing stuff out? So if you asked yourself, what is the best market to trade? Are any of those old wives tales being passed down from generation, from trader to trader, from, you know, broker to broker? Like, have you figured out what's the best market for you to trade? And a lot of people, when they start trading futures, they'll trade the S&P E-mini futures. And then they end up uh, trading them because everybody else is trading them. They've got a lot of volume. They get chopped up in them, and then what happens is they start trading them, and they go, okay, I get, I'm get, i getting chopped up. 
Uh, you start to question whether this is right or wrong for you to do. Why can't I do this? I'm successful. I'm smart. Why can't I figure this out? It's just too hard. And then you start asking yourself, is this rigged? Well, there's good news and there's bad news. You've probably been you've probably been betrayed. And I don't mean somebody actually screwed you on purpose. What I'm talking about is you've probably been lied to, and it's not your fault. Um, now you're probably asking yourself, all right, who the heck going to lie to? Um, they are other traders the media, investors, and it's passed down from generation to generation, from trader to trader. Did you test what actual market fits your trading style? And it's okay to trust people. You just want to make sure that you also verify what they're telling you. All right. So true or false, do you think if you can trade, you should be able to trade any market? True or false? True or false, if you can trade, you can trade any market. And I would say overall, if you're a decent trader and you're successful, I would say that's probably true, but it's easier if you trade something that matches your trading style and your personality. So if you don't match your trading style and your personality to a market, it's going to be very frustrating and very painful. It's, it's going to be like trading the wrong market or the wrong style for you is like hitting yourself in the head with a hammer it's going to feel great once you stop, okay? All right, so think about this statement. What's wrong with trading better, faster? Is there anything wrong with trading better, faster, as opposed to you having to take two years to eight years to figure out how this works? So there's an actual, there's a little shortcut you, that you can do. Now, there is no shortcut to long-term success, but you can speed up your learning curve, and here's how you do it. First, you got to pick the best market for you to trade, and here's how we're going to do this. First, we want to find something that has a very good average true range. Does everybody in here know what average true range stands for? Who does not? And I'll explain it real quick. Are we getting any no's here? Does everybody understand it? Yes, yes, me. No, no, no. All right. So average ATR stands for average true range. And it's basically how a market's going to move. Let's say the market moves like this. Then it would be from the low point to the high point, and that would be its range for the day. So in this example, when we're looking at the slide, um, on the Dow, the Dow moves 93 points in a day. It's times $5, so you're going to make or lose 465 points. The S&P moves $10 a day, $50 a point. You're going to make or lose 515 points, or $515 per contract. NASDAQ, 25 points, $20 a point. You're going to make or lose $518. Russell moves about 10 points, $100 a point, plus or minus $990. So in this column over here, it's going to show you what you what you stand to make or lose on the total side. You see this? This is the cash that you're either going to make or lose in a general day. Now, there's no way possible, in my opinion, that you're going to get the entire range. That's just too hard to do. You could probably get half the range. Now, the second thing you want to do after you get something that's got a good average true range, you've got to know the personality of that market. These four markets right here trade like this. They run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse. Oh, yeah, and then they run, stop, reverse, some more. So has anybody ever traded the E-minis and got chopped up on them before? Have you tried to unsuccessfully buy a breakout on the e mini just to be rewarded with a nice little stop out? So they can be frustrating. They're not the easiest things in the world to trade, especially if you're a trend trader, okay? Now, the 30-year bond market, they trade like this, so you could – the 30-year bond market works like this. It'll go up, and then it'll control pullback, and then it'll go up, control pullback, and then it'll go up over time, then it'll consolidate, and then it'll pull back, okay? The crude oil market is bipolar. It's like that crazy ex-boyfriend or that crazy ex-girlfriend or that crazy ex-wife or crazy ex-husband. This one's hard to trade. Stay away from it until you get profitable in other markets, all right? Uh, silver's a little crazy. Stay away from that one. Gold, I actually am a huge fan of the 30-year bond. I'm actually a huge fan of gold. I'm one of the most active uh, gold traders in the U.S., if not the world. I trade a lot of gold. It trades like this. It goes it goes up, consolidate, up, consolidate, up, consolidate, then it'll pull back. Okay? And then the currency futures depend on what pair or, or, or what currency future or spot you trade. Uh, some of them are herky-jerky and some of them are trending. But if you're going to trade the E-minis, try trading the Aussie dollar or the EC. But really spend some time and get used to trading the 30-year bond and gold. 
So you can see here in gold, uh, you you could potentially make in gold you can make about eighteen hundred, and then on bonds you can make about eleven fifty. So we're going to talk about bonds, and I don't have enough time to teach you notes tonight, or I should say today, this morning on Saturday. So I'm going to teach you how to trade the bond market. All right. So um, this is a system. These this first trade is going to teach you how to trade on, how to hold on to a winner a little bit longer. All right. Now we've already talked about the difference between sprinters and marathons. So they're run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse, run, stop, reverse. And then the things that trade this way are index futures, crude oil, some stocks, okay? Those are trade that way. Now, stuff that are marathon traders are, are the bond market because they'll go up, pull back, up, pull back, up, and then they'll pull back. And then there's also gold, explosion, consolidation, explosion, consolidation, explosion, consolidation. Which one are you? Are you A or are you B? And which one do you think is easier to trade methodology? Run, stop, reverse, sprinters, or marathon runners? I like the Energizer Bunny. They just like keep on going, and then they go, and then they go, and then they go some more. So I'm going to teach you how to trade <clears throat> two different trades in the 30-year bond. All right. So I'm going to skip some of this filler so that I don't run out of time because I want to make sure that I'm able to answer all your questions. at the end. And I'm going to show you this stuff live, too. So there's some stuff that you need to know. All right, you don't need to know all this, all these months. That's not that important. I'm going to skip that part. Uh, all right, so the bonds trade just like the union. They're going to trade March, June, SEP, and then also December. The letter valuation for that is HMUZ, so it works like this. So the U.S., the 30-year would be USM13. It would be USM13, and then it would be US. U13, and then it would be US Z13. The the US is the symbol. This column is actually the month, and then this column is the year. Okay. Now how futures markets works is you're trading the future. All right. So right now we're trading the December contract. In the second week in September, we then roll over the contract from September to where we start trading December. In the second week in December, we're going to stop trading the December market, and we're going to start trading the March. Uh, it'll be then it'll be USM14, and then the second week in um, March, we will then start to trade the uh, USM14. Has everybody got that? That's how futures work. Is it March? Yeah, but no, 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 right now, right now we're still USZ13. Until we roll out a DEC, then we'll go back up to March and it'll be US important. Yep. So it'll be HMUZ, HMUZ. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And if I'm I'm writing anything down, just go with it here. I'm trying to fly through it so that I can teach you all that you need to know. All right. Let's see here. Bonds and notes. These are the specs. All right. This market opens up at 6 p.m. East Coast time zone, all right, and then it's going to close at 5 p.m. So does that mean it's open for 60 minutes, or does that mean it's open for 23 hours? Real quick. Is March H H M U Z? Yeah, 23. That's right. So it's open for 23 hours. The open outcry opens up at 8:30 and closes at 3 p.m. All right, 8 8:20 to 3 p.m. That's the East Coast time. This is what it looks like on your quote screen. This is U.S., this is the 30-year, this is the 10-year, this is the 5-year, and this is the 2-year. It opens up at uh, 6, closes at 5. It's $1,000 a point. It trades in, uh-oh, here's where it comes in, 1, 32 seconds. And you're going to go, oh, dear Lord, we're back into high school, which is crazy because now in grade school they're teaching all this stuff. I mean, my kids are in uh, most advanced classes and they're taking like stuff that I didn't even take until I got to college. It's a little scary. So I'm going to show you exactly what that means here in just a second. I'm going to skip these slides because they're they're good, but I've already explained this to you. This is how they look. It goes USH13, USM13, USU13, UZ13. Um, it depends on your broker. Just call your broker. I'm going to try to get to the slide that's going to help you out the most. This slide right here, if you don't pay attention to anything else that I talk about except this, from here on out, start to pay attention. 
So this is a quote screen, except for that random little color that I just put on the chart. So we're going to pretend that you're long right here, L-O-N-G. Does everybody see that? At 135. Does everybody see you're long at 135? If you go, if you get long one contract at 135, and it goes from 135 to 135 and 130 seconds, how much money are you going to make? How much? $31.25, okay? Now, if you go from 135 and you hold it till it goes to 135 and 230 seconds, how much money are you going to make? Yeah, that's right, 62.50. All right. So, does anybody remember about how long an average true range? What was the average true range on long? Do you remember what it was back from that slide earlier? It is about a point. It's about 1.15. Okay. So it's about a point range. So if we can get in a trade where we can risk five ticks, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to risk five ticks, which is going to be $156.25, to potentially make 32 ticks, that's where your $1,000 profit comes in. Okay? So if you go from 135, you hold that thing all the way up here to 136, then it goes, okay, 135, 29, 30 seconds, 30, 30 seconds, 30, 130 seconds, and 136 is actually, you know, 135 and 32, 30 seconds is all that means. You're going to make $1,000. How often does the ATR change? ATR changes every day. So what I use is I use a 14-period average true range, and that will give me the average range over the past 14 days. Okay. So <clears throat> how, do you, how do you feel now? Do you think you have a decent feel for how the dome works on bombs? Because one of the worst things – that happens when you never traded something, you're like, man, I don't even know what the tick value is on this thing. And you throw a trade on, you're like, oh, that's a little bit too rich for my blood, or man, this thing doesn't move at all. So this is how they work, okay? So at a thousand dollars a point, they're very methodical. The way they trade are just very it'll almost put you to sleep sometimes. They're very methodical. You'll turn around, you'll risk five ticks, and you'll be like, oh, okay, I'm up seven hundred dollars. Great. It's very unexciting, but it's very profitable if done correctly. All right. Assuming you know the direction, right? You, you do have to know the direction. You do have to use a little common sense. All right, so I'm going to move on to the next slide. This is what they look like when you quote them on the screen. This one says it's going to be 131 and 31 30 seconds. This is how TradeStation does it. This is how Infinity does it. Well, they'll go 133.12, which really means 133 and 12 30 seconds. 133.13, which is 133 and 13 30 seconds. Makes sense, right? Every broker is a little different. You just kind of kind of know what you're doing in order to match with those things. Now, this is the second slide you want to pay, pay attention to because this trade that I'm going to show you will work both intraday and overnight. Intraday and overnight. So you call your broker. Most people will let you trade these things for $500 intraday margin. Uh, to hold them overnight, it's about $3,000. If you're going to do the 10-year, the 5-year, the 2-year, it's a little less. I'm going to teach you how to do the 30 year because I trade this one the most. If you placed a trade at 9:30 and you held it until 4:30, uh, EST is that intraday margin or overnight margin? Can you do it in your IRA? Yes, you can. That's intraday. Now, if you put this trade on at 9:30 and you held it until <clears throat> let's say 6:30 at night PM East Coast time, is that overnight or intraday margin? <clears throat> Excuse me. Overnight, awesome. Now, if you put this trade on at 7 o'clock p.m. and you close it out the next day at 4 o'clock, is that intraday or overnight? Intraday or overnight? Intraday or overnight? What do you think? So a little mix. We got a little, we got a little overnight. We got a little intraday. Most at most brokers, it's considered intraday margin because the market opens up at 6 and closes the next day at 5. So you won't have to pay this higher rate. You could potentially pay this lower rate. Now, it's a little bit different at every broker, so you need to call. But now you can see that now you're going to have 23 hours to see if you can get that full point. So now you're going to put the odds in your favor. All right, so let's get to the meat of this presentation because I know you just want to learn how to – I'm going to skip the text rules, and I'm going to draw them apart for the sake of time. First and foremost, here's what you're going to do. This is called a 
reversal. This is called a eight tick reversal trade. Okay. Now the bonds move like this. What they'll do is they'll go up, and then they'll retrace eight ticks, and then they'll continue on their merry way. Or they'll go up, they'll retrace 12 ticks, and then they'll continue. Or they'll go up, and they'll retrace 16 ticks, and then they'll continue up. I am an eight tick pullback guy, okay? There are people that will trade the 12 and or the 16. I know you're not all going to be wired like I am. You may be going, you know what, I want to do the 12, or I want to do the 16. You can do that. What I do is I prefer the eight tick reversal. Those are the ones I enjoy, so those are the ones I'm going to do. All right, like I said, only works four times out of ten. Worst case scenario, it could only work three times out of ten. This is what the trade setup works like. All right. So does anybody know what this is? When If I short here and cover here, what is that called? Does anybody know what that's called? <laughs> a, put, a put. That's hilarious. That's right. It's, it's called a loss. So it's called a loss, and that's where I do a deposit with the market. What's this right here called? Where I short the market here and cover the market here. So that's the first loss. And then this is the second loss, right? So lose 156, lose 156, loser, loser. What's this called when you short it here and cover it here? So I don't want to just show you winning trades. I think that's a, a, a bad way to actually teach people how to play. That's, that's right. That's called Mr. Happy Face, right? So that's a thousand dollar gain. So how much money did I come out of hit? If you do a thousand minus one fifty six minus one fifty six, how much money did I make in that series that that string? And look like well, here's the thing. Little loser, little loser, big old winner. See how that works? So we're gonna come out ahead six hundred and eighty eight dollars on the day on one contract. Not too shabby, right? But I'm willing to do donation, donation, pay me big. Donation, 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 pay me big. All right, let's go through the rules. We are going to go through a rule really quick. I'm going to teach you how to do this. I am not here to sell you indicators at all, although I do have indicators that will just throw on the chart when they, when they see this thing happen. I'm going to teach you the rules so you can do it on whatever trading platform that you use. You do not use, you do not need any of my indicators at all. Yes, mine is automated indicator. You don't need it. So I'm going to teach you everything you need to know so you don't have to buy my indicator. Right? So first, this is the bonds. It's, you can see it's in a massive uptrend here, right? Do we all agree that's a massive uptrend? Until it broke that trend line and the daggone thing started selling off really hard, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a vote here on this chart. Are we in an uptrend or are we in a downtrend based upon this trend line break? All right, down, up, down, down. I'm seeing more downs. D, 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 more downs. All right, more down. So we're going to say we're in a solid downtrend now, okay? We're in a downtrend because we broke this uptrend line. Based upon us being in a downtrend, we are not going to do longs. We're going to do no longs, okay? Why are we not going to do long? Is because we're in a, a, a good, solid downtrend. Now, if you want to go long in a downtrend, it's not a bad thing. It just means you hate money is all it means. It's not a good or bad thing. It just means you and money don't have a real good relationship with one another. All right. So here's the trade setup. So we're in a solid downtrend in bond market. We sell off. This is the intraday time frame. Here's the 6 o'clock time frame. The market opens up, sells off, puts in a low here. Now what's this right here? I'm going to let the market bounce up eight ticks. I'm going to risk five ticks from my entry. And then I'm going to use a 32 tick target. So I'm risking $156.25 to potentially make $1,000. You understand the trade? Downtrend, I could have done it here too at the close. I could have done it right there too. I chose not to. You can do it either intraday or you can do it overnight. I tend to do this trade in both time frames, intraday and also overnight. Let's go through it one more time. The bonds are in a solid downtrend. They open up at 6 p.m. for me right here. I'll let them sell off and make a low. Now, here's the deal. I don't know if that's a low, but what I do is I put a line here and I go, okay, that's the most recent low at 146 and 437. 
as soon as I see that low being made and start to see it bounce up, what is 4 plus 8? What is 4 plus 8? 4 plus 8 equals 12 in most countries. So what I do is I put a sell stop. I say, okay, if it reaches 146 in 12, 30 seconds, short that for me and use a five tick stop loss at 146, 17, 30 seconds. And then I want my target to be down here. If I shorted at 146 and 12, 30 seconds, then what's my target going to be? One full point, right? Yeah, you can do sell limit. That's fine. Any questions on this trade so far? All right, so here's how it works. Now, let's, let's go through this. What would be some of the reasons that this trade probably worked? What does it take out of the equation from here to probably about right in here? What's it take out of the equation from there to there? That usually messes up every single trade that you do when you jump out of it prematurely. Do we have any serial killers in here? Any serial killers? This is what this is my definition of a serial killer. You get in a trade, and as soon as it as soon as it's up a little bit of money, you just choke it to death. Like you're just like, ah, I want my two hundred dollars. Heck with that thousand dollars. Give me my hundred bucks. Any serial killers in here? Premature profit taking. Does anybody in here suffer from premature profit taking? The reason this works is because when I'm in this trade and I have my stop loss here, during this entire time, I'm in the bed producing these, right? I'm just in the bed asleep and just cranking off Z's. So I can't jump out of it early. I can't trail my stop to aggressively. I can't see it going, you know, it was almost at my target down here and then it, it retraced and I, I could have potentially jumped out of it if I wanted to. Now I, I get into the market at the office here about 9, 930. I could have done it then, but I'm going to let either my target or my stop get hit. So it's going to take the biggest thing in the world that usually loses you money. It's going to take me or it's going to take you out of the trade. You have a, you have a, you have an entry, you have a stop loss. And you have a target. All right. So after I woke up, then I started trailing the stop. I did not trail it aggressively, as you can see. All right. I trailed it down to about 375. And then there's the profit on that trade on a one lot. That's the first trade. That's how you risk $156. Do you ever move it to break even? I will. As soon as I get up like 10 ticks or so, I could potentially move it to break even. Why a five tick stop loss? That's just what I use, Robert. That's how I back tested it to work for me. It's the best. Risk to reward ratio for the trade. All right, so there's that trade. Let me teach you the sneak attack trade. Here's another trade, all right? And then I'm gonna go straight to live charts and then I'm gonna take questions. So here's the second trade. That's the first trade. That's how you risk 156 to make a thousand. Second trade is an intraday only trade. So the key to success is their trade is determining the trend. Yeah, the key to success is determining the trend, but that's not hard. So here we're gonna say that the, the bonds are still in a solid downturn because they were in an uptrend. They broke their uptrend line, now it's in a downtrend. <clears throat> Bonds are selling off. Does everybody agree that we're in a downtrend? Just say yes or D for downtrend. I'm gonna get a drink real quick. All right, cool. All right, here's the rules of this trade. The rules of this trade is you're gonna start at 7.20 a.m. and it's gonna end at 8.20 a.m. Now when I say end, this is the first filter criteria for the trade. We already know that we're in a solid downtrend, okay? So we're not gonna take short. The reason we're not gonna take, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, we're not gonna take long. We're in a solid downtrend, so we're not gonna take intraday long. This is, yeah, this is EST, EST. <clears throat> the reason we're not gonna take long is because we lost money, okay? We're only gonna take short since we have a downtrend in the daily chart. From 7.20, to 820, you're going to find your low, and then here's your high. You see that? We're going to start our little, our hour bracket trade. How do you determine the trend? Any tool? Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you that. Before. So from 720 to 820, you find your low point and you find your high point. On this trade, the low was 145, 21, 30 seconds, and the high was 145, 31, 30 seconds. Does everyone see that? Then you just do some basic math. It's fractions, which sucks, but you could still do it. So you're going to take this number. Minus this number, so 145, 31, 30 seconds. Minus 145, 21, 30 seconds. That's a pretty easy one, right? 31 minus 21 is what? 
31 minus 21 is, that's it, folks, 10 ticks. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to put a bracket on this thing. At this current low and at this current high, if we break up through this high point, do we go long, yes or no? Yes or no? If we break out of this bracket, do we go long? No, that's right, we don't. Why are we not going to do that trade? Because as traders, we respect money, right? That's because the downtrend is a downtrend. Well, now, down here, you see this where it broke out of the downtrend right here? We can short that at that time. We're going to short that. We're going to use a five tick stop loss. Okay. Now, our target is going to be our initial range right here. What was our range? How many ticks? How many ticks? Ten ticks. So we're going to risk five ticks to make 10 ticks. I'm going to go to the next slide real quick. All right, next slide. Here we start at 720. Here's 820. Here's our low. Here's our highs. We can see that we break down right here. See that little breakdown right there? So we're going to short it at 145, 20, 30 seconds. Your stop loss is going to be 145, 20, 5, 30 seconds. We know from 45 to 20 that our, our, our target here is going to be 10. And it's 145.11 or 145, 10, 30 seconds. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to risk five to make 10. Any questions? That's the two trades I want to share with you today. So now, like I said, I'm not here to sell you my indicators. I use these for my personal use, and also some of my members use these. Here's an example of how this trade went down. Here's a short entry. It tells you to get short right there. All right. It tells you, all right, there's the short entry. Here's the short stop, and then there's my target. Okay, here's another example. This would be a long entry right here. This would be a stop loss, and then boom, here would be my target. All right. Keys to your trading are going to be money management, good entries, and good exits. When those come together, your confidence increases and your profits increase. You got to have some good trade setups. All right. Now, one thing I want to do real quick you got to have good trade setups, a good executed trade will beat the pants off of a perfect executed trade any day of the week. Don't try to filter out the losers. That's impossible. That's a fool's game. Enjoy the deposits and the withdrawals. All right. Now, let's go really quickly. I'm going to make uh, – let me see here. Let me show you oh, – well, not advanced. Before I take questions and answers, I want to make you this special offer, and I'm going to go to live chart and then answer questions for the rest of the time. Um, if you go to hubertstenton.com forward slash expo, I've shared with you today two of my favorite bond trades, all right? Now, I trade stocks, futures, gold. I trade pretty much everything. And in this online online trading, I've got a course that I, do, I sell for $197. I also have an Ichimoku cloud charting secret course that I sell for $197. That would be $394. You can have both of them, two for the price of $197. Go to hubertcenters.com forward slash expo. It's only for the first 100 people. Um, there are over 738 people in here right now. You can also call the office, a code 859-963-3445. We have operators standing by right now. So if you call, you'll be able to get through until the phone starts ringing. And then after that, then it's going to get a little iffy. All right. So any questions for this trade setup for bond, uh, for the bond filter? Any inner market filters. You don't really need any, mar any, any inner market filters. So go to that link, hubertcenters.com forward slash expo, and you can have uh, – this is what it looks like when you add this to your cart. Okay. Let me see here. So you'll add it to your cart, and it'll say add to cart. This is my ugly face right here. And then this is an hour video, hour video, hour video, hour video, hour. So there's seven and a half hours of video. And then there's live trading day number one, live trading video number two, and then here's your bonus. As soon as you enter it, you're going to have access to this course, all right? It comes with my promise, 100% satisfaction, no questions asked. If you don't love it, you don't keep it, it's not a big deal. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. This is what's in the course, okay? My favorite ways to scan the markets for swing trades, the best way to scan the markets for day trades, how to filter out what trades to take. All right, that's in module one. Module two, you get this, the seven horsemen trades, seven stocks that beat earnings 90% of the time, seven stocks that beat earnings 80% of the time. I'm going to teach you how to trade stock gap plays and gap and goes. And then I'm also going to teach you how to do gap and crack trades on stocks.
All right, now in E-minis, I'm going to teach you how to trade gaps on index vehicles, the ambush trade, the 85-115 fade trade, and then the crescendo trade setup. Now, on the gold, the good not gold trade, where I teach you how to risk $600 to make 6000 which is kind of like that overnight bond trade I showed you, but it's just different, okay? How do you, how do, you do you ever use market profile and volume profile? I do, yeah. The gold rush trade and the gold bug trade. That's in module three. Module four and five, I teach you the bond trades. I taught you this one here today, the overnight bond trade, which was the eight tick reversal. And then I also showed you the sneak attack earlier on the second example. So you already have two of these tricks. All right, so you have one module as a gift. And then there's Ichimoku uh, Trading Secrets, which is this cloud trading secret. So here's the link one more time, hubertcenters.com forward slash expo. I can hear the phone ringing off the hook in the background. If you get a busy signal, just leave a voicemail and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So it's hubertcenters.com forward slash expo, area code 859-963-3445. All right, let me go out real quick here to charts. Uh, discard. Can you see my chart right here? So here's how this trade works. This is the this is the sneak attack trade. Does everybody see this? This is the second trade that I taught you earlier. The second the second trade that I taught you. So can you see this where it says short entry? This is what it did on Friday. So there's the short right here. Here's the short stop. So you had entered it here on this candlestick. That's the stop. That's right there. That's the stop. And then you, can you see the target that was hit? So it's pretty easy to do, right? So short, short trades right here, boom, short stop. Here's your short entry, short stop. Entry is the purple right here, short entry, short stop, and then target was hit. Now, let's talk about the 8, 12, and 16 tick bond reversal. So I'm going to show you. First, we're going to go to the video tab. What does what do the bonds look like on the past three days here? Now, they look like they're in a minor uptrend, but they started rolling over about five to seven days ago. Can you see this? So this would be a downtrend in the bond market, in my opinion, three to five days downtrend in the bond market. Does everybody agree we're in a, a little minor downtrend here? Because I'm going to show you this trade. All right, so we're in a little minor downtrend. So we don't focus on shorts on no longs. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our, our bond workspace. Now watch how this works. So if, if we know we're going down, then all we do is we sit here. Now this indicator is a little bit different. All I have to do is I have to hit the control key and I'm going to go, boom. Now you see that? From this low, it's going to retrace back eight ticks. And you see this where it says entry at 135 and 15, 30 seconds? Up here's my five tick stop loss. Now if you want to, this is an eight tick, this is a 12 tick, and this is a 16 tick. So off of this low, it retraced eight ticks. Here's my five tick stop loss. There's my target one, target two, and target three. That make sense? So let's see if we can find another one. All right. So that was on that was on yesterday's stuff. Uh, we can even go back. Check this one out. So boom, boom. Look here. Bonds sold off. What did they do after they sold off? How much did they bounce? They bounced up. How much? This is this is the, the previous day. How much did they bounce? They sold off and then they bounced. How much? Eight ticks. There you go. So you could risk one. You could risk five ticks, which would be 135, 25, 30 seconds. Your entry was 134, 21, 30 seconds. And then on this, if you trade multiples, you can scale out plus 10, plus 20, and plus 32 ticks. Now on this example, how long would you have had to held that trade, right? The first target was hit, and then it stopped you out, right? If you're going for the third target, then you got stopped out on it. But if you go for the first target, you didn't. Same thing on this example. You could have had a nice little trade going to the downside. Will it work on empty points? I'm not. I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm here to. I'm not, really not here to tell you indicators. I'm just telling you that I developed these up for my own personal use. If you want them, you guys can contact us. It works in different platforms. But really, what I'm trying to um, make an offer to you is um, this right here. You do not need my indicators on the trade. You've got the rule sets. Um, if after you buy this course, if you want to do that, I mean, we could probably give you some kind of big discount or something like that. So, hubertcenters.com 
forward slash expo, hubertcenters.com forward slash expo. i got about four or five more minutes I can answer questions. So hit me with your questions, and I'll do my best to answer. You can also call the office. I hear the people in the background taking orders and the phone ringing, so just keep keep that in mind. Just leave a message. Can you put the retracement indicator where the price is currently instead of the past date? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you definitely can. You can do it in real time. Yeah, they're all real time. Yeah. Uh, how do we know which mode to apply it to? Well, all you do is you just get the low, and if it starts to bounce, put it on that low, and then if it makes a new low, then you'd re reset it. Do you look at the trend in a daily or an intraday? I do both. I look at both the trend on an intraday and a daily basis. I start with the daily, though, and then I move to the intraday. For the past three days, the bonds have been in a downtrend, a really good downtrend. So we can do this as many lows as are formed in a day. You can, but don't do the trade more than three times in a day. Be be relatively picky. Do it one or two times in a day, and if it doesn't work, wait till the next day to do it to make sure that you've got your percentages set up. This is not an overactive trade. This is a, you know, it's going to sell off. It's going to bounce. You, you When it bounces, you pounce. Uh, look at the trend in the day. Yep, you're welcome. Uh, confused on the trend. On the trend, does the system work in an uptrend as well? Yes, it works in both uptrends and downtrends. It, it works in both. How long you? Uh, how long did it take you to learn to be a good trader? Uh, probably three years, two and a half, three years. Is it ninety-seven or one ninety-seven? It's, it's ninety-seven dollars. You get you get both courses. You get this course that retails for one ninety-seven and a bonus course, which is Ichimoku Cloud Charting Secrets. Uh, you get them both for the price of ninety-seven dollars. So it's only a one ninety-seven one-pound order. Of any trade, any trade station results, back tested results for these two trade setups. Uh, I don't have those back tested on trade station, but you, you can feel free to do it and just check to verify me. Do you have an in, do you have any input on value charts? Uh, yeah, I like value charts. Uh, I'm I'm a fan of value charts indicator. It's a good indicator. What indicator do you use? What indicator do I use? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, Gan and Elliott Wave, good stuff. I mean. You know, there's 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 about a half a million different ways to trade and make money, and a half a million different ways to lose money. So it really just depends on on what floats your boat, on what you do. Everybody's a little bit different. So what I would do is I'd try to pick something that fits your trading psychology and your trading personality, and just stick with that. Sorry for trend. For trend, I usually use this right here. I usually use this right here, which is the Ichimoku, which is um, a Japanese uh, technical analysis study. It's free on every charting platform out there. It's called Ichimoku or Cloud Charts, and this is what I use for trend of identification. I use it on. I usually use it this right here, like on the cloud, on a six on a daily, a 60 minute, and then a 10 minute chart, so like AAPO. This is usually my default way, and I teach you how to do that in the course. Um, how to use Ichimoku. It's free on almost every single platform out there, so it's not a big deal. You don't have to buy it. It's just included in every platform. Um, is is there a practice account you can use for this? Sure, you can use a practice account on anybody that will give you one. Um, what was the biggest gain and loss on the trade in the USD? The biggest the biggest loss would be $150, and the biggest gain would be 1000 because we're risking 156 to make 1000 uh, what do you think of the 30-year and the 10 will we're doing the next two weeks? I think they'll go down. What break, broker do you recommend? Uh, there's a bunch of different really good brokers out there. Try uh, they uh, try Fausto's Group. They have really good uh, stuff. Yeah. Uh, I use TradeStation, Toss, Thinkorswim. Uh, I use Infinity. I use a bunch of different ones because I have a bunch of different relationships with everybody. Does this work on the 10-year notes? It does, but you got to use a different rule for the 10-year notes. 10-year notes parameters are, are different. They're not the same. Are there retake classes later after this one? There's not retake classes, but I do sell courses on how to trade gold and bonds and stuff here. Cheers. All right, I'm out of time. I don't want to take anybody else's time. Thank you very much. The order link, I'll put it up here one more time. Thank you very much. I hope you learned a lot. Hopefully it'll help you. I hope you make a lot of money. Um, that's for the first 100 people. Like I said, there are 731 people in here now. So they'll probably all be gone today. So grab this. Area code 859-963-3445. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Fausto, it's all yours. 
Thank you, buddy. I'll see you on the next one. Hubert, thank you.